Last week, we found a small leak in our fuel tank, patched the pinholes, put a layer of glass on the bottom, and painted an epoxy protective barrier coat. This week, we're polishing the fuel, building a platform for the tank to rest on, and dropping her back in the hole. I'm Sid, and these are my best friends. My mom, Kim, my dad, Ty, and my sister, Maddie, who before starting her own adventure, joined us in rocking out a state-of-the-art refit on our floating home. Now, we're ready to set sail to die with memories, not dreams, and live dauntless. So today is Monday, August 15th, and it is exactly one week <laughs> past our 24th wedding anniversary, and I was sick ruined it so we're doing an anniversary makeup we are actually gonna go down to West Palm Beach and we are going to go out to lunch and dinner and we have a hotel room and we're just gonna enjoy a little romantic getaway for the night so we had to stop by the pod so that Ty can pick up dress pants and the 50s so that I can pick up a dress and now we're off so here we go down the road See you down there. Since leaving Colorado, we've struggled to find a fun restaurant that makes a chili relleno that reminds us of what used to be home. Rocco's Tacos in West Palm fills that comfort food void with ooey gooey crispy chili rellenos, fresh guac made tableside, and yummy margaritas. For about the last 10 years, we've celebrated birthdays, anniversaries, and special occasions at Seasons 52. It's a chain restaurant, but is consistently fantastic. 24 years has been an amazing ride with so many memories made. Thank you for pushing me outside of my comfort zone, Ty. I love you 3000. All right, guys, I'm sorry for, for skipping ahead and not showing you this, but it's real simple and straightforward. I flipped the tank over. I did an epoxy skim coat of the um, the top side of the tank, and then I put two coats of the sealant on it, or the, the epoxy anti-corrosion um, stuff on it. So we're now ready to start doing some fuel polishing, and I, am, I pumped 20 gallons into the tank, and I've sloshed it back and forth, which I'll show you how I'm doing here in a second, and we're going to clean and polish that stuff up so that I can then un or pump all the fuel back out again and get the tank down in the hole so here we go i'm gonna show you where we're at give you a status update and then uh yeah then we'll go from there and i'll show you the inside of the tank all right here we go all right guys um i am polishing the fuel so i got the tank recoded here you can see it's all pretty and i screwed down a plywood support that goes down what the tank's gonna sit on instead of just those three edges, edge pieces of plywood. Um, but now there's a little bit of sediment in the tank and I'm trying to filter that out. And I've used some uh, diesel tank cleaner and fuel restorer stuff. And that basically breaks down that material and puts it into solution and cleans the inside of the tank. So what I've done uh, to help speed that process up is I've added about 20 gallons of fuel into the tank. Uh, there's just the sediment at the bottom. And then I've put this um, uh, dowel as actually a kid's um, uh, garden tool. And I just took the, the tool head off of it. And this allows me to tip the tank and slosh it back and forth. Um, and you wouldn't think that that one inch makes a big difference, but over a you know four and a half foot long tank, it really does make quite a bit of difference. <clears throat> then I'm running it through a Raycor here. And um, this is what I really wanted to show you, is that this is what a new Raycor filter looks like. And I'm starting with a high micron. So I'm starting with 30 micron, so that the openings are as big as possible to catch as much, to be able to, filter as much fuel as quickly as possible, but just to catch the big particulate. So I bought a couple extra of these, but I'm gonna show you, this is a 30 micron filter that I had run here for, oh, about an hour. And you can see how it's, I don't know if you can see there, how it's bulged. Let's see if I can put one on top of the other. See how it's like 
fat and bulged out. Uh, but yeah, it's kind of hard to see on the inside, but it is packed full of mung, and then I can see some water coming out of the filter as well. So I'm gonna continue to run this. I'm using my cordless Milwaukee pump, which is freaking legit. All right, we got the pump hooked up. Got my draw tube down in there, and then I'm gonna pump it out of here all the way up, and Kim is outside. Holding in the tank. Hey, babe. All right, so let me see if I can hold the flashlight here. Wow, I film it down in here. There we go. Click it on. And I polished the fuel on the inside and got it as, as clean as I could. We'll do another couple polishes on it here in a little bit. Um, but also, I wanted to show you what it looks like. Um, so here is top of the tank diesel fuel that I spilled on it that I'll wipe up here with some acetone and then I put a block off plate down there which there was just three pieces of plywood up on end that it was just sitting on so now this tank put the fiberglass on the bottom is going to be sitting right on that plywood which is a, which is a much better way to go so that's what's happening I'm going to take that block off plate that sits on top get it out of the way and uh, try to get a camera set up and you can see Kim and I wrestle this thing back down in the hole. Hey, wish us luck. Okay, so I don't know if this is entirely necessary now, but there was straps that went all the way around the tank and that was to isolate the stainless from the aluminum and to isolate the aluminum from the actual uh, plywood that it was sitting on. And uh, we now have fiberglass and epo epoxy uh, fiberglass 1808 on the bottom of the tank. So really it's not going to touch anything, but um, in the spirit of you know, extra cushion and overkill, I'm going to put down three strips underneath that the tank's going to sit on and I'm going to use the other strips and drape them over the tank to go under the straps so that these uh, stainless straps you're going to see here in a second, even as they go down the side of the tank, can't touch it. So I just need to figure out which one is the shortest. Nope, they're all the same length. So I pick one of them and cut a couple strips. Alright, there's the four strips. And, uh, lower this tank down on top of it. Once the tank goes down, it's gonna be strapped down really, really tight. So it's really gonna pin this down to this plywood structure I'm standing on. Oops, let's try this angle. Maybe I won't run into it while I'm trying to put the tank in the hole. easy <laughs> yeah you didn't see me take it out so all right it looks good so now what we've got is these hoses here all of this jazz turn lines Pretty sure I'll figure that out. Oh God. Um, all right. And this is the vent line over here. Come on, baby. So now what we need to do is we need to take these big straps and start on this side. What we want to do is we want to tip our tank so this slides this slides like this down the strap all the way down all the way down until it stops to the bottom okay go 
goes even past the bottom, it's not a big deal. Well, I can't see, so I don't know where it's going. No, you're doing great. It slid all the way down to the, into the bilge space. So now, we just want to make sure that we've got enough to go down this other side. Same way. <coughs> No. How do you know? Like, you, can you look? We just need to get past here. Other oh. than that, it's just extra. It doesn't matter. There you go. So now, with your hoses out of the way, these just lay down. Like this. So you just want to make sure that this is. Yep. And that's it. Now our tank is sitting down on those rubber straps down below for the padding. Ones that you cut. Yep. And then this will hold the tank down. And all we have to do is just reconnect everything now. That was easy. High five. Um, this is to the engine, so we'll need to peel the tape off and hook that one. The other one is to the generator, which we don't use anymore, but we're still going to keep it hooked up and leave this closed. Correct. Um, we need to peel the tape, put our fuel sender back in again. Um, and then really the hardest part is I've got to go into, oh jeez, I've got to go into the engine room. I'm gonna have you line this up and then I'm gonna shove from the other side and you're just gonna guide it on, okay? Um, and I want, you'll need to, when I get it lined up, make sure that the that these are loose. This one's kind of snug because I didn't want it to fall off, but it's gonna need to expand out. So we just need to loosen this um, pipe strap so it can slide on and then we can tighten it again. So that's it. Good stuff. Push. Ready? Ready. A little bit more. A little more. How much more? Uh, all of the silver is covered. Do you want to go a little bit more? Uh. Yeah. Okay. Good? Yeah, hold that. Oh, crap. All right, tighten it up. All right, so I went to the West Marine and they did not have number 12 metric. However, they did have half inch and it's gonna fit. So I got half inch instead. So I'm just gonna swap out the metric for um, Imperial. Now this is something I wanna show you. This is a lock nut. You can see that. This is stainless, this is mild steel. Looks like they put all of them in this way. And that little white ring that you see here just happens to be blue on this one. And it literally, the steel corro corroded until the lock, the nylock, fell out or is loose. You can actually pick it out of here. Um, it spins. So that is what allowed these straps to get loose over time. So hopefully the stainless on stainless, we won't have that problem. All right, so I have the pump hooked up. This hose goes into the um, into the barrel that's outside that has our reserve fuel in it or the fuel that came out of the tank. And then I switch this from the pickup tube. This is now the drop off tube and is gonna go down in and fill the tank. Um, I'm completely strapped in. All my connections are hooked up. Uh, my ground's reconnected to the tank tank sensors hooked up and uh, yeah the bolts are nice and tight now this isn't going that's not going anywhere so vent fill draw draw I'll turn that guy on because that's gonna be for the engine okay guys we are ready to go you ready Kim yeah. all right here we go you ready yeah I'm ready <laughs> about 15 minutes with a small diameter hose to fill up the tank. All right, 
guys, I'm super stoked. It is all in and hooked back up. Brand new hardware. And we got our placard back on. Good to go. Thank you.